right, welcome back from your last week of work. We are going to start, um, we're going to move in a different direction. You talked about the introduction to animals and their animal body plans and their different um, shapes and designs. And we're going to apply that to different types of animals now. So we're going to be heading in, I guess you can see by your slideshow screen, talking about invertebrates. But it's important that we remember and recall where we came from and how we got here Remember that we have talked about um, microorganisms and things that are one, si one cell size big. And we talked about the design and the structure of the cell and all of the different things it does. And so we're going to kind of jump from there with those microorganisms and go back through the taxonomy that we've already looked at. And let me show you where we're going in the taxonomy with animals. Okay. All right, so let's look at the taxonomy. And by taxonomy, we mean classifying. And by classifying, we mean grouping by similar traits. Okay, like when your kindergarten teacher told you to, um, she handed you a box of shapes and said, here, put these in groups that are similar. And you would put all the squares together and then all the circles together. We're doing the same thing with living things when we classify them in their taxonomies as well. We separate them by traits. And so the first overarching or biggest group that a living thing can be a member of is the domain. Okay, that's every living thing fits into one of these domains. And the first one is bacteria. And the second one is archaebacteria. And I know that archaebacteria has the name bacteria in it. And that was because it was classified um, in the 1800s. And I forgot the guy's name who did this. But they are different from the other bacteria. And then the third domain is going to be eukaryota. Okay. Now, bacteria and archaebacteria are prokaryotes. Or they belong in a group called prokaryota. And that means that these single cell organisms do not have a nucleus. They don't have their DNA or genetic material bound up inside of a nucleus and their cells are not as organized as the eukaryotes. Eukaryotes do have cells that are run by a nucleus that has the genetic material bound up in the nucleus as well. So we've already talked about the bacteria and followed it down and talked about monarins. Um, so now we're going to focus in on those eukaryotes. Okay. Now the um, different eukaryotes, um, this would take us down to the taxonomy of kingdoms, kingdoms. And so we talked about the monarins, which are bacteria. And then we talked about the protists, and the protists were the single cell organisms. Many of these guys um, will make you sick. Then we talked about fungi just briefly, and then we talked about plants or kingdom plantae. Remember, we talked about the um, four different uh, phyla of plants, and, and we talked about how you have seeds covered seeds, naked seeds, flowering plants, etc. Now we're going to follow eukaryota to the animal kingdom or kingdom animalia, okay? And when we do this, we're going to separate animals or classify them into two separate groups, okay? And we call these subkingdoms. And these subkingdoms are whether or not they have a backbone or a spine. So you have the vertebrates and you have the invertebrates, okay? We're going to cover both of these, but we're gonna start with the invertebrates. These are all the living animals that don't have a backbone or a spine like similar to ours, okay? So now we're going to break these invertebrates down into eight different phylums, eight different phylums, okay? And that's kind of how our study for the next couple of weeks is going to be organized, is the eight phylums of invertebrates. All right, these invertebrates, this just shows the tree of this subkingdom invertebrata or invertebrates and the eight different phylums that belong 
in this category. Okay, so let's look at each one of these phylums just in an overall general description. And then in, in um, other videos, we're going to go over each one more in depth. The first one is phylum periphera. And these um, are pore bearers, pores. So like openings or holes. And so these are going to be your sponges. The next phylum is phylum cnidaria. And these cnidarians are invertebrates that have stinging cells or stingers. The next phy phylum is platyhelminthes. Mm -hmm. And I like to remember this one by calling them flatty helminthes because these are your flatworms. Next, we have the phylum nematoda, and these are the round worms, and you've probably heard of the nematodes if you watch SpongeBob. Next is phylum mollusca. These mollusks are clams, squid, and snails. Then we have phylum annelida. These are the segmented worms. Phylum arthropoda, these are going to be insects, spiders, crustaceans. And you're just like, wait a second, Miss Berkmeyer. How can you have insects and spiders in the same phylum? Because they're different. Spiders aren't insects, and that's exactly correct. We're going to talk about how that works with the taxonomy. And then we have phylum echinodermata. And we say starfish, but please remember that that's kind of a misnomer or a bad name because they're not fish. So um, more modern science is calling them sea stars.